Is there a right way to teach children to read? Absolutely. The science is extremely clear, but after decades of confusion across American schools, only 35% of our kids are proficient in reading, according to the National Assessment of Educational Progress, which is also known as our nation's report card. In our efforts to ensure we cover what we like to call the big five, phonemic awareness, phonics, fluency, vocabulary, and comprehension, we seem to have forgotten that we need to stress each one a little more at different times. This all started way back in the days of Noah Webster, an American teacher who published the blue-backed speller, grammar, and reader in the late 1700s. These were the first American-made textbooks and represented a departure of previous notions that children should be exposed to Greek and Latin before English. Webster also believed that American children should use books written in America. His blue-backed speller, named for the blue cover, taught spelling in a progressive way, using the rules for spelling as he knew them at the time. The Speller was, in essence, a phonics book. This was the most popular book of its time, which had 385 editions. Between the years of 1783 to 1890, they sold a whopping 60 million copies. So for the first 100 years of American education, there was a definitive way to teach reading, through a phonetic approach. It's also interesting to note that this book evolved our spelling patterns and resulted in the modern differences between British and American spellings. For example, color was spelled C-O-L-O-U-R in England, but Webster morphed it into color C-O-L-O-R, dropping the U in order for it to follow a more predictable pattern. Then, in 1837, a politician named Horace Mann began creating a public system of education in the United States. He believed that all children should have access to education. While Webster believed that school's primary responsibility was to teach reading and writing, Mann believed schools should play a role in creating discipline in children. He got many of his ideas from visiting Prussia, which is now Germany. We can thank him for bells indicating when class begins and ends, and for the creation of normal schools, which were established to train teachers. Mann is also responsible for promoting the idea of a female-only teaching force, which is likely the reason the field is still dominated by women. He also promoted the idea of separating children into grades and started funding schools through the use of property taxes. Mann believed that schools should be secular, well, sort of, not espousing a particular religion. But he also believed the Bible should be used in schools to teach morals in the tradition of Christianity. Mann believed in a whole word method of teaching rather than through the phonics method that was being promoted by Webster. In the 1920s, a large school reform effort included shifting schools away from phonics. Since that time, the phonics and whole language pendulum has swung back and forth. Most notably in the 1990s, phonics was actually banned in many elementary schools. I recall at that time when I was a young teacher seeing colleagues actually smuggling phonics books into their classrooms for fear that children would not learn to read without them. Fast forward to today, we now have what is known as balanced literacy, which is supposed to help teachers balance the big five. The problem is that many teachers have not been properly trained in phonemic awareness and phonics. In fact, today's generation of teachers is likely to have not been taught phonics themselves. Instead of teaching children to decode using spelling patterns, they use predictable texts and rely heavily on whole language strategies. We need to move toward methods that will be the most likely to support each child's success in reading. Right now, only 35% of our kids are learning to read proficiently by grade four. Look around your classroom and school. Which kids do you think deserve to learn to read? Who are the 35% you would pick? Well, that may seem like a harsh question, but that's our reality right now. If you'd like 100% of your kiddos to be proficient in reading, lean into the science and ensure that you are providing access to direct, explicit, multi-sensory structured sequential instruction in phonemic awareness and phonics. This is what we know works with nearly all kids. It doesn't mean you abandon great literature and it doesn't mean you stop increasing fluency and vocabulary but it does mean you may have to abandon guessing games and three-queuing strategies. 
When a student encounters a new word, you want him or her to use decoding first to figure out that word. Would you like to learn more? Click on the links on our website to better understand the science of reading. Watch the rest of our videos to learn how to transform your classroom or school into a place where all kids learn to read. To ensure your science-based reading strategies are working, you need good tools for assessment. Lexplore is developing a rapid digital reading assessment using artificial intelligence and eye tracking. During 2020, we will offer a new Pre-K to 8 tool to meet all of your reading assessment needs. Please watch our one-minute demo at the end of this mini-course to learn more.